Yeah, so, well, if you guys are an atheist, why are you not moral nihilists? What do you mean by that? You believe that there is no meaning or purpose. Why should an atheist be a moral nihilist? Well, what, what, well, what, is, what is there that gives meaning to the universe? Why do you think there has to be something that gives meaning to the universe? So we can have conversations about reality <laughs> or anything else. So there has to be some thing to apply a meaning to have a conversation about it? Is there any meaning in the universe? I, I don't think there's any inherent meaning in the universe. Do, do you, would you disagree? Yes. I mean, the fact we're having conversation kind of disproves that. What do you think the meaning of the universe is that allows us to have a conversation? Well, I, well, the thing is, I believe. Well, I, I'm not sure if you guys hold the same position, but from what I've heard from the atheist experience, Collins, everyone, like most atheists, are moral subjectivists. That is to say, they don't believe that morality is objective or apart from them. They believe morality is an expression of their personal preferences. And I say, well, the fact that we're using language to express them illustrates that we're not we're not really subjectivists. We're being objectivists. I'm and not that that sure. Objective. I'm not sure that people would agree. I think. I mean, I can't speak for Matt, but I think he goes toward the concept of you know. A, of a, of a, I can't speak for him, but I'm not sure they yeah. agree with that subjective that, morality idea. And I, I mean, when you're when you talk about morality, specifically, what are your metrics for for uh, what constitutes a moral, like a morality? Well, I mean, are we are we really talking about like does does do any moral categories even exist? You're going to so test. You're going to test to see if a dog has moral tendencies. What are you looking for? Well, I'm not. I'm not interested in the dog has moral tendencies. I am because we need to find out what you're. What What do you? What are you calling morality? If we're going to have a discussion about morality, you talk about meaning. We need to know what no. it means. So, if we were going to test oh, to I'm see if dogs have moral tendencies, what would we be looking for? You know, morality is not a tendency. Morality is a goal you have to strive for. It's not mm, a natural phenomenon. So, are you saying morality doesn't actually exist in any sort of metric way? There are no metrics what for morality. There's no measurements what for you it. Measure? You're saying it can't be measured or identified? How, how do you, what do you mean? How do you mean you measure it? I'm not sure what you're <laughs> I mean. I mean, how would you quantify morality? What are you looking at and looking mm -hmm. for when you are trying to determine whether or not morality exists and in what way that it exists? Well, no, I, I, I'm a Christian. I say morality exists and the a character of God, it brings that into the universe. Okay, so well, if we wanted to say, if, let's say we want to find out if a dog has morality, what are we looking for? But, but, you're, but if you're atheist, what is morality at that point? I'm asking you, what would you be looking for? I'm trying to figure out what it is. If you wanted to know if dogs have a morality, what, what would you be looking for? What, what makes okay, so, somebody a moral agent? I, I would see, so it, it would only be in as much as it mimics Christianity or Christian pr activity. But that, my question is, why are you not, are you, technically are you not moral subjective? I don't you know what you mean by moral, so I'm having difficulty answering your question because there's a word in your question that has not been given, a, that we don't, I don't know that we agree on, so I'm trying to figure out what you mean by moral, right? So if, if, if we wanted to test to see if dogs were capable of morality, what would we be looking for? What kind of behavior? No, I'm, but my question is directed at you. Are you not moral nihilist? I Are can explain it to you, but I need to know what you're calling morality because what I'm calling morality might be something totally different, in which case the conversation would take a different turn. So yeah, what we, I'm we have to agree to, on what morality is. I need to is. know what you're asking, okay? I want to know what morality is to you. What morality means to me is a set of tendencies that are shared in social species to different degrees. When they are tested for in other species, when we test for moral tendencies in species other than human beings, we are looking for the concepts that they understand as you know, equality within their species, right? So for a dog, we would wanna know, does that dog recognize the concept of fairness between itself and another dog? The concept of empathy between itself and another dog. Can this Compassion. dog experience guilt? Yeah, all of the feelings that we have that help us relate to one another in ways that allow us to treat one another as a species in ways that serve the social function of our existence. Does that help? Oh, so, you, so morality is what continues the species. The, the ultimate uh, pinnacle of what determines what right and wrong is is how it determines keeps the species going. 
No, that's not what I said. What I said, what, are you saying? what I'm saying is that there are particular tendencies that have developed in social species that we share. And there are other species that have different, different um, variations of these same things, but they are the tendencies that allow us to be social as opposed to rogue or independent animals that don't necessarily have a high level of sociability. You can breed sociability into an animal. So we had, for example, the silver fox experiment where they took these foxes, they bred them to be more passive, and in essence created a more social version of that, of another, well, they created another animal out of it that was more social. And that animal had more of these communicative social tendencies. In order to interact as a society, you have to have the concept of one another as equal, right? So I have to see John as being like me in a way that a dog is not like me, okay? And so morality has to do with all those tendencies that allow me to say, this thing I treat with fairness and compassion and empathy because I know this thing is, I recognize this thing is like me. Other species have that same capacity. Whether or not it results in our species ultimately doing what's best for us, I don't know. But I do know that it is something that has evolved in people and in animals and that when we test for it, we do have metrics that we're looking for and it is the things that allow us to recognize our own species. Does that help? So if I'm, but that's, that doesn't really answer the question because I'm asking, so I mean, whether or not we're bringing other animals into it, like it's right, are human, we've developed, like morality is divided by seeing how human beings act in nature or they're acting for the benefit of society. It's not, morality isn't about an action so much as tendencies that exist within social animals. That's what I'm trying to explain. How they manifest is a different question, right? But, but whether or not a thing is moral, it would be, is it capable of these, of experiencing and expressing things like empathy, equity, compassion, fairness, right? Like um, a dog, if, it, if we can show that this dog has a, has a recognition of fairness between itself and another dog, then we realize that it starts to have these moral tendencies or what some people have trouble calling that morality because they have issues with the idea of, of applying morality to another species because I think they're little species is. But the point is, this dog has a tendency that is like our tendency of for fairness, right? So the dog can exercise fairness as well and recognize fairness as well. A chimpanzee also can recognize fairness, but it recognizes fairness in a different way than the dog, right? So it's, there are these tendencies that exist at different levels and express in different ways in different species, but they are, they do seem to be mainly in the social species. So That's morality. Do you, you disagree with that? When people express like like fairness, that's not actually an action on their part. It's just an expression of their biology. There's no actual choice involved. There's no agency involved. The only agencies that would be involved, the idea that you are capable of fairness, to me, makes you the moral a moral agent, right? The idea that you, I mean, especially what you're, when you express that, right, so let's say you're hit with a question where somebody says, I want this and this person wants that, and you have to then think about, I have this, this desire to be fair, so now I have to decide what is fair. But the morality starts with the metrics, with those moral tendencies that already exist, right? You already have that morality as part of your core being as a social species that says, these are the metrics that make me um, be part of the things that are categorized as, as morally capable. Now, how I express that morality is going to be determined about by my personal judgment. Probably my, my experiences are gonna come into this, my, um, you know, think any, I think experience is probably gonna play a big role because you can socialize people to behave in certain ways that seem really reprehensible and yet the society itself will say, oh, well, we see this as like a good thing for whatever reasons that they're trying to explain it. The point though is that a person should at least be trying to exercise fairness, empathy, equity, compassion, you know, guilt, obligation, all of those things that, that are between people. If you're trying to express that, you're at least trying to be moral. 
whether or not other people are going to view what you're doing as moral is another thing because they're going to have their own experiences and their own judgment of it. But as long as you are exercising those tendencies in your decision, you are acting as a moral agent. So, so basically, fair, like fair, if I go back to like fairness is, is an attitude or a mood that people have and they express itself in our nature. But but then all of a sudden we have to strive. It's no, we have, when we strive for it, it's not necessarily in our nature, right? I mean, if we're striving for it, that means we have to actually live up to it. It's not necessarily in our nature. I think it is in our nature. Well, then why do we have to strive for it? Well, I, I'm not sure if I'm understanding, but it's like there's a difference between being capable of fairness and being called on to treat someone fairly. So for example, if I treat John in a way, if I cheat him out of his money, I know I'm not being fair. I, have, I am not acting morally toward John because I'm not expressing, I'm not trying to be fair. When I'm trying to be fair, even if I do something and it turns out badly, most people will be compassionate toward that. They will say, it didn't work well and it was a bad idea, but Tracy was trying to do the right thing, right? Most people will understand that I was trying to behave fairly toward John. Now, if, I, if, I, if, if it looks like I'm not trying to be fair, if I'm trying to be unfair to John, people will say I'm treating him immorally, that I'm doing something bad or wrong. Does that make sense? Well, then what makes, right, what makes fairness or right or wrong true? Is it just that we have desired for it to be true? No, it's not about whether or not fairness is true. It just simply is, right? I mean, fairness is a tendency in, in social species that, that have that as a tendency. So when you're saying it just is, it's not, tr it's not true. It's like there's no... There, there's it's like no, saying dark hair, fair. right? Some things have dark hair. Is it, that true? It's, yeah. not, it's not true or untrue. It's, or it, it, it just is. We have a capacity for fairness. When we exercise the capacity for fairness, we're being, we're being, it's labeled as acting morally. When we exercise our capacity to not treat someone fairly, we call that immoral. When the thing that we're doing is neither, it has nothing to do with fairness, we say that it's not a moral judgment. It has nothing to do with morality. Does that make sense? Sense. But, but, is it, but the thing is, you're kind of jumping around. On the one hand, you're saying that fairness is an expression of our biology, and we ought to, and we, and we naturally go for it. But then all of a sudden, you turn around and say, "Well, we no, 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 no." Wait, there's a difference between saying I have a capacity for fairness and I am going to be fair in all situations. Yeah, right. So there's just because a being has, because for example, chimpanzees also show the capacity to be deceitful. So, as do humans. Right. I mean, we can be fair or unfair. When a person behaves in a way that people say, this is, you've behaved fairly or you've tried to behave fairly towards someone, you've made a good faith effort to act in fairness, we would say that was a moral, that, that I was behaving morally correctly. Because that's what moral is, the expression of fairness. When I don't treat someone fairly, when I actually treat them unfairly, that's what we call immorality. That's all I'm saying. You're asking what makes, it tr what makes it better or worse. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm saying we have a capacity to be fair, and when we are, that's what we call morality. When it's a we label have a we put on. Yeah. But, but it sounds like it's more an expression of what social society pressures on you. It's not actually means it's right in and of itself. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I'm saying we label the behavior of being fair to people as right. We've, we've labeled it that. We've created the idea that this is right because this is, a, this is a tendency that we value and that we strive for because among social species, it makes biological, like evolutionary sense that we're going to more often treat each other in a, in a preferential way because it helps our survival. And so this isn't something that we consciously need to actually understand because as I said, even a dog will show this because the dog needs to be able to work with other dogs in order to survive. And so these tendencies have evolved along with everything else about the dog to feed into its survival. And it's the same for us. We just simply have evolved these tendencies in when we utilize them, when we try to be fair in general, it helps us as a group when everyone can trust each other. When you can't trust but other people in your group, your group breaks down and it, it's very bad. Does that make but sense? You're saying that survival, but now you're saying that survival is the ultimate moral imperative. No, I, I am not saying it's a goal or an imperative. I'm saying it is the reason that these traits have evolved. 
whether or not, I mean, it's like saying that noses are an imperative. They're not. It's just something that helps us survive. Well, you understand there's a difference between a nose and a concept of fairness, right? That there's a difference between what? A nose. Noses and the concept of fairness. No, there's not. Wow. These are evolutionary traits. Fairness is a moral imperative. It's not a, no, you're no, not why are you calling it a moral imperative? Well, because you're, because, well, you're, because you, if you end the conversation, you said that we that it is important for us to continue as a species. No, then, I didn't say it's important for us to continue as a species. I did not say it is important. She for said us. it has survival value. I simply said that the, that things that survive and in a, if, through an evolutionary process generally, you know, end up with traits that have served them in their survival. Whether or not people, it's important for people to survive, I'd, I'd have no judgment on that. Well, then why do you bring it up in the conversation as an example? I don't think I said that it was important for people to survive. But, but you're bringing it up as if it's something important. I don't know why. I'm saying simply that it's relevant That's how to it why we have these these, why I have eyes, why I have a sense of fairness, why I have a sense of empathy, why I have, you know, um, a heart. <laughs> these are things that have, that evolve. I don't have a choice in these things. This is simply, I was born part of a species that has these innate tendencies in general across a population, different degrees of variation in how they're distributed. But the point is, this is simply innate to most people. And this is, I'm yeah. simply explaining to you why. I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, or I'm just saying that's how we are. That's how we, we are built. Imperative implies that there's some so, external agent making a decision. Uh, your eyes aren't an, an imperative. They're, they're something that evolved in us in order to give us a survival advantage. Right, so how does that relate back to it being, like how is the, the, our eye like our moral imperative? It, because they give us a survival advantage. It, it wasn't, now, it wasn't but that's a decision. Different, that's different than saying that I think it's important that we have a survival advantage. I'm simply saying it's true that it is giving us a survival advantage to be able to work together and trust each other as a social group. So you think it's important? I think it's what? So you think it's very important that we... It's important if, if surviving as a group is the goal. Uh, is, and is it? Is that what we... Is that that's up to you. To, <laughs> Whether or not you want to participate in this is up to you, that's right? A, that's I mean, a preference. Society will deal with people who for ex cause so much disruption that it threatens the social structure, right? I mean, they're not going to sit there and, no. in, in essence, um, let somebody destroy the group. So usually society has these self-defense mechanisms as well. But I'm just simply saying that moral tendencies exist in many species... They can be tested for. They have been tested for and demonstrated in many species, including people. They seem to serve as an ability to identify other members of your own species and work together with them in this sort of trusting way so that you can cooperate. And it serves the capacity to survive as a product of the fact that we evolved to this point. Whether or not we should continue to evolve and survive, that is kind of up to the group. Okay, this really isn't going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where it's supposed to go. Where is it supposed to go? You're, wait, you're not engaging with what I'm saying, but thank you anyway. But, uh, okay. but on, on a last note, I just want to say I don't, I don't really believe you guys are atheists because you are trying to implicitly say there's something of value. But, well, thanks for any, thanks anyway. I didn't even catch that. All right, well, thank you. How could that not mean we're atheists? I don't know. <laughs> if, but if I you, don't know what, I don't you, know. I, I have the same, this was. If you value survival, you're not an atheist? Where, where, how does that fall? I, I don't know, because I, when, you know, when I was a theist, I didn't care if I died. <laughs> right? When I was a theist and I thought I was going to go be with God, I didn't care if I got, I, I actually believed at the time that I was a Christian that if somebody tried to murder me, I should let them kill me because they could then go on and live their life and maybe find salvation and that I was already saved. So if I died, then I would go to heaven. You were okay. So yeah. I felt like self-defense was even wrong for me as a Christian because it denied somebody else an opportunity of salvation and mm. it was fighting for a life that didn't really matter. Anyway.